And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Peg Collins, who's the Information System Manager from Washington State University, and Jeff Anderson, the Director of Marketing and Sales Engagement from Explorance. Well, thank you, Devin. Um, hello, everyone. As Blackboard's premier partner for course evaluations and surveys, Explorance is very proud to have this opportunity to present Peg Collins from Washington State University. Uh, Peg will be sharing her experiences and best practices for online course evaluations. And I'll be here to capture your questions as they come in, and I'll help out a little bit during the question and answer period. Uh, Peg, I think we're all looking forward to this. It's all you. OK, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's nice of you to join us this afternoon or this morning, depending on your time zone. Uh, and uh, look forward to speaking with you today. So we'll go ahead and get started. This is the outline of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Washington State University and what kind of an institution we are, uh, and how we have come to use Blue for our online course evaluations. Then I will talk about how we engage the faculty in this process of moving to Blue and engaging in participants in the online course evaluation. What we've done to try to draw in the students, how we notify them what kind of access they have. And then last but not least, uh, we'll talk about our response rates. We had quite a dramatic uh, improvement in our response rates when we moved to blue. Uh, so you can see on the screen the um, topics we're going to go over with faculty. I'll explain on the subsequent slides what each of those areas are. So I'll go ahead and get started. This just tells a little bit about me. I've been working in information technology for about 25 years before I uh, went down the technology path. I completed a master's degree at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts in survey research and worked for about two and a half years, uh, both at the Public Affairs Research Center at Clark University and at the Survey Research Center at University of Massachusetts, Boston. And that background has uh, served me very well in my current position, which combines those two areas together, assessment and technology. I've also had extensive support uh, roles at the university here, including supporting Blackboard at one time. And I no longer do that. But I supported our learning management system for about 10 years and ran a customer support help desk for faculty and staff. But I'm really enjoying my current role as a blue technical project manager. WSU is in eastern Washington. We're not in Seattle or the other one on the other side of the state. And we are a land grant institution. We're a large research university. Uh, we have four campuses. Our main campus is in Pullman, Washington, on the east side of the state. We have an, a, another urban campus in Spokane, Washington, which is also in the east, about 70 miles north. And then two smaller uh, campuses, one in the Tri-Cities, which is in the middle of the state, and then one in Vancouver, Washington, not to be confused with Vancouver, BC, but it's directly south. And that's over on the coast. So across all those students, we have all those campuses, excuse me, we have about 20,000 um, students. We're the land grant institution for the state. We have um, a distance uh, degree online offering as well. So one of our um, challenges with choosing an online course evaluation system was to find a system that would accommodate both multi-campus 
large volume university and a highly decentralized model of colleges. So we got started in blue uh, in December 2013. Uh, we, we had about five candidates that were in the, the top uh, running to become the new course evaluation system. Blue was quickly identified as a top candidate and uh, uh, came out as the system that we wished to pilot that we thought would best meet our needs. In February 2014, we did a pilot uh, with Explorance uh, over six colleges and about 4,500 course sections. We started our pilot on February 28th of 2014, and our evaluations were running in the uh, second week in April. So that was a very challenging time frame in about six weeks. And it was a great experience because it was really hands-on and, and got us to really know the system. So we adopted Blue in June and, and um, as our new online course evaluation. Uh, and in September uh, 2014 was our first full system. Blue replaced a homegrown system called Skylight. And um, so our first semester, the goal was to put as many colleges that were already using our homegrown online system into Blue as possible. And then this spring, we've brought on more people. And we anticipate this will be a two-year process, another full year, academic year, before we have everybody on board. I wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about some of the successes that we've had running Blue and using Blue. For the students, it's been remarkable that we have had almost zero technical issues. I say no there, but you know it's not quite 100% no. With uh, Blue itself, there have been no technical issues with the mobile phone or tablet access. That's been one of the real success factors when we were looking at systems. Our provost said, I don't care what it is, but it has to do mobile. And it has to do that successfully. That was his bottom line criteria for choosing the system, one of his criteria. But that was like number one to him. He wanted students to be able to easily access this. And in addition to that, access it in a way uh, where it would be accessible for all students. <clears throat> so we were really concerned about um, ADA compliance and how this would work with students that um, were using uh, different methods to access. Blue gave us a lot of improved formatting of the way the questionnaires looked. It was great because we can really automate and configure the evaluations for, particularly for our clinical programs. We have a number of clinical programs, College of Nursing, College of Pharmacy, College of Veterinary Medicine. And those programs often have clinical courses and serial, what we call serial team taught courses. And Blue allowed us to automate and more easily hand, handle having just-in-time evaluations where the students can evaluate an instructor uh, if they have five instructors during the course of semester, right after the first instructor finishes their uh, teaching clinical rotation. Uh, it allows us to have um, questions that can be grouped so they're not uh, repetitive, so the student is not answering the same questions five times. And accessibility was a big factor. Faculty always wanted to get the reports. Our old system did a pretty poor job of reports. We basically had only one report that came automated out of the system. They also wanted to be able to see uh, response rates while the evaluation is running and wanted to be able to do this by a dashboard and not have to call somebody or ask somebody or get something emailed. And they wanted to participate in the process. And QP, as Blue calls it, question personalization, allows us 
to do that, where faculty um, can actually write their own questions and add them to the evaluation. The results uh, are great for both faculty and our Office of Assessment and for the deans and chairs. Uh, they can have immediate access to overall college response rates so they can see how all their courses are doing uh, while the evaluations are running. They, we have really nice reports now, summary reports for deans and chairs, comparison statistics. And they really love the fact that our response rates have, have gone up uh, since we've been using work. So I'll talk a little bit about the faculty. Uh, question personalization allows them to add questions to the evaluation. So in addition to the questions a college or a department wants to ask, an individual faculty member can ask uh, something about their particular course and assignment that semester. For example, we had an engineering professor who was teaching a course on robotics and they had some specific assignments on building robots and he wanted to find out, this was the first time they had such an extensive hands-on, he wanted to find out how the students reacted to that. So that was very useful to him, sort of for formative um, assessment for the faculty member. Uh, they could view their response rates, they got improved reporting, and it has a feature which we'll see in a minute called virtual questions in the reporting and summary statistics. So we'll take a look at some samples of those reports in that process. Uh, this, this next slide shows the question personalization process that it looks like to an instructor. And so the instructors are emailed uh, a link which they can follow which takes them to a screen that looks like this and allows them to they have a period of time where they can add their own questions. Those questions are limited. So, you know, one of the, probably one of the questions that people had is, you know, well, I don't want my instructor adding 50 questions to the evaluation. So, each college has its own policy, but the, the maximum number of questions that we've had added to evaluation has been six. So, on this screen, you can see here, the faculty member has an option to add three open-ended text questions by replacing them here and two um, agree-disagree fixed scale questions. Faculty has really loved this process. They feel like they're a participant and a stakeholder. These reports are for them, uh, the questions that they add, and they just feel like for the first time ever it's actually easy to do this. So I think that has been a, a huge success. We did this both in the pilot and, and we have done it for our two semesters. This um, slide shows the uh, response rate viewing that faculty have. And this is from a course that's running right now. We started most of our course evaluations Monday, April 20th. And I think I took this Tuesday. So this particular college, the College of Agriculture, are running evaluations until May 8th. And you can see on Tuesday in this particular class, five students had responded. 46 students were, have been invited to respond. And so right now the response rate is at 10.87. One of the ways faculty has really become engaged in the process is to look at these reports every couple of days. They can also look at it on their mobile phone during the class period. And they could say, mention to the students in class, hey, I notice only about half of you have taken the evaluation. Don't forget, you've got a week left. And so they can really um, know where the class is. They can mention it in class. And response rates have gone up. And a lot of them just really like watching it, <laughs> you know, and so we've gotten a lot of really nice feedback about the ability to do this. And this is one of the great features of Blue. 
in addition to the response rate viewing, I don't show it on this screen or in the presentation, um, we have a, another report that we call the respondent completed report. And what that is, is it's a list of students that have completed the evaluation. I didn't display it in this presentation because I didn't want to have any real student names in there. But that's great because they can also see just a list of names of people who have completed the evaluation, but it, it, that has nothing to do with the actual data or who said what or when they completed it or anything like that. Here's a sample of where, uh, this is a sample of a blue report. This is um, just a very minor sample of the numbers of questions. Of overall rating of the course, I removed the name of the course and the instructor. Normally, you would see the course here, and you would see the name of the instructor here. And this just shows you some of the kinds of displays of reports that faculty get. They can see where they're doing. They can get a mean, a median. There's many, many other statistics that Blue can display, um, but we've chosen these. Here's a sample report that um, could be given to a, a college dean or a chair. This one's from uh, the College of Veterinary Medicine. And they do three averages across all the courses. So this sums across every course that was evaluated in fall the average rating for this particular item. The course was well planned, organized, and followed. Then it gives the department rating, and then it gives the college rating. So you can see there's some differences uh, here. In a college like veterinary medicine, uh, I think they only have five departments. But in some of our other big colleges, like the College of Arts and Sciences, where there are 22 departments, this kind of report can be really, really useful. This is another uh, type of report that we use uh, on faculty and chairs. Uh, this one, where it says instructor here, normally that would have the instructor name, of course. And it shows uh, the course, what campus it's at, what the course's response rates were, and it gives an overall instructor mean and an overall course mean. Uh, for each instructor. So this gives a, a quick look summary for a chair on how my instructors are doing. It's also a great way to take a look at your response rates. And you know you can see here like this one, history 305 is down at 67 percent. You know, they might take a look and say, why is that one a little bit lower? Uh, I've done this same report on this particular history class before. In one year, there were three sessions that were down at 20%. And uh, they were all taught by the same instructor. So then the chair could take that and say, well, you know, maybe we need to talk to that instructor and say, you know, encourage your students to take it, and things like that. Another really nice thing. Um, for faculty and administrators is a feature of Blue called virtual questions. And I don't know any other system out there besides Blue that has this feature. And it's really great. This question that we see here in Blue is a Likert block. And over here would be the, you know, the scales. I didn't put that in the slide. So this is a number of items in a Likert block that the students are being asked about the, the um, course and the instructor. So what Blue allows us to do on the report is make what's called a virtual question. So it can combine Likert scale blocks, and they can take just these three items out of this block. And you'll see the results on the next screen. It shows a report that combines those three items and gives me summary statistics. And they call these three items of those 10 or so average student rapport. And they can get a mean for this particular instructor on student rapport, this particular subject. Uh, subject meaning subject is like uh, econ, uh, 
computer science, that's what we call subject. Department would mean something like electrical engineering and computer science is one department. But this might be a computer science course. And then VCA, EA is the, the whole college, the College of Engineering and Architecture. So you can see here, this instructor is getting, a, a, this is out of five. You know, the lowest is one and the highest is five. This instructor is not getting a particularly good rating compared to his department or his college on this particular aspect of the course evaluation. So that allows you to um, just do some comparison work. Students uh, really like blue. We've had pretty universally um, positive reactions. Partly that's because our old system was so bad, but it's also it's also the part of uh, uh, that blue is a, is a great system. We it has um, true 504 compliance accessibility, and what I mean by that, I remember when Samer, the CEO of Blue, came and talked to us about Blue at the university, and he showed some examples of this. Uh, you know, there's accessibility and there's accessibility. You can uh, have a question displayed and it, people say it's accessible because the screen reader can read it, but it doesn't move the cursor to the right place or it doesn't, um, if there's an error, it doesn't read an error message out to the screen reader. Where Blue really does that. So I think I worked for a long time on a committee in the early 90s on accessibility at the university on the presidential committee. So this is a, an area that uh, I have a lot of interest in. And Blue really does a superb job. This was the, one of the areas that I was really looking very closely at in our evaluation of vendors. The other thing, as I said before, our provost wanted mobile devices. We also wanted a way for students to access the evaluations in the student portal or in the LMS Blackboard, as well as have the capability to do email notices and reminders. So this shows the Blackboard Blue dashboard. This is before any evaluations are working. So you can see here, this is the My Institution page. We've decided just to put the portlet down here. And this is part of Blue. It's called the Blue Portal Integrator. And it integrates right into the Blackboard page. So when students log in, they can see if they have any evaluations to take. What would, what would show, if we just go back, what would show right here now in this little box, this is a blow up of it. This is what it would look like today if I took a picture of it. So you can see this is uh, one student. They have five evaluations to take. It's great because it shows the students whether they've done it or not. It shows them you know, the, the end date of when they have to do it by. They can see I completed this one, but I still got these four to do. So this is really nice. It gets students where they are. They're already in Blackboard. They can go right there and do their evaluation. And they don't have to remember, oh, did I do that one for Architecture 209? You know, it tells them, all right, that one's completed. Blue also uh, allows students to take an evaluation and, you know, save questions and come back. They get interrupted. So they would see an in, they can also see a status of in progress. Some of our colleges ha have done a really great job of uh, improved notification and access. And we have, um, 12 different colleges, and each one of them has their own unique style of how they present. Uh, and so this is one <laughs> that they did this semester. They sent this on the email, uh, on email, this little slide of the pirate here, and uh, encouraging their students to do it. And in addition to this slide, which they, they sent on the email, they also included an extensive list of things, um, uh, which this actually appeared underneath the slide, where students could, could get 
uh, help. They know where to get help if they have problems with an evaluation. There's an FAQ. Uh, it tells them where the login page. Zeus is our the name is a funny name. It's our student portal. That's what we call it. So it shows them how to get to the login page. So we can really customize um, notifications in different ways for different colleges. This is another college. They chose a little bit uh, less informal uh, way. Um, instructors were given this as a PowerPoint slide to put up in their lecture. The last couple weeks of classes, they could put this on the screen while students are filing in, or they can put it on at the end and um, encourage students to go and do their evaluations. They also took this same um, slide and made posters out of it and put it up in the college on bulletin boards and things like that. So these are all the kinds of things that we have done that we've seen have really increased um, student participation and response rates. So uh, these are the things that, that we've done. Uh, sort of as some best practices. The email reminders, including that customization that we saw, you can have things like if you want to target a particular class, you can have the course in the subject line. You can target an email to a particular class within the blue system while the courses are running. Say you've got a class where you've only got a 10% response rate and you're monitoring that as the uh, manager for the evaluations. You can go in and then just send an email just to the students in that course to try to target them to do that. I experimented with doing this in the pilot when we were using Blue in the College of Engineering. And uh, if I send something like Engineering 405, course evaluations due now in the subject line, I actually sent the email out, watched the email go, went into blue where I can see the tasks and the students responding. I could see that they have responded. And I could see completed responses coming in immediately after that email. So this is another really great thing about blue is it has a lot of tools to allow you to see what's going on while the evaluations are running. Also, the personalization, you can have a dean. The one we saw with the pirate that was signed by an associate dean for teaching and learning in a college. And some rather creative messaging can go on. We also have a dashboard with those links. I think that is really critical. The dashboard feature in Blackboard is where the students are. Uh, they don't have to worry about the email. I know students do. Uh, email on their phones. They get the email on their phones. They can click the link right there. But they can also just see it right where they're in dashboard. They don't have to worry about, is that link a spam link or anything. So I think the combination of the two is really effective, that you can do it either way. And then there's reminders. The reminders are automated in blue. So I can send an uh, email to students uh, today. You know, emails went out on the 20th, on Monday. I can set and automate a reminder saying, in seven days, send another email. And of course, it only sends an email to those students that haven't responded already. Because of course, it tracks who's responded and who hasn't. You know, and I can set another reminder saying, you know, three days before the evaluation close, send another reminder. And each one of those reminders is customized to have uh, you know, whatever kind of language the college wants to try to encourage students to complete their evaluations. The faculty involvement, mentioning the evaluations in class, showing the slide, making sure students know that they can find that evaluation in the portal, have been really critical. I think actually the number one factor in the many years I've been looking at response rates and evaluations is faculty involvement really drives up uh, student evaluations. And faculty are more involved 
now, since we've had blue, because they have a chance to participate in the process. We've also done incentives, extra credit points. We have that responded completed list so that they can give extra credit points. One of our chemistry instructors had a really creative idea that has been extremely effective. He would have the students allow them to drop one of their homework grades. Any homework grade they wanted, their lowest grade, they can drop it if they take the evaluation. And that sort of sounds like a silly thing, but it's, it's been extremely effective. He usually has a 99% response rate in his sections. And the reason that I like that idea is that it, it gives the student a choice. You know, they could say, oh, well, you know, I don't have to do that last homework. It's final exams. I want to study. I'm just not going to do the last homework assignment. I'm going to do the course eval anyway. So uh, it gives them some flexibility. There's been little incentives like that. Uh, in one of our professional programs, those small uh, numbers of students and when they have really our cohort in the veterinary medicine, they gave points for the class as a whole. So uh, you know, they said if you do the evaluation, you get an extra two points. If the whole class, if we get a 90% or more um, evaluation in the whole class, we'll give you all another two points. So that was a little bit of an incentive. I wasn't sure that that was going to work or not, but it actually ended up uh, being pretty effective. We're going to talk about, uh, show some of our response rates here quickly. This is in the College of Nursing. Uh, in our old system, which again was called Skylight, we had a 38 uh, percent response rate in the College of Nursing in fall 2013. Our first full semester in blue, we had that increase to 78 percent. And here's sort of a little graph. One of the particular reasons I think that in addition to what we did that it was so effective is that blue allowed us to have nursing students participate as they went through their clinical rotations. So they also were able to do the evaluation from the instructor in a timely manner after they had the instructor. They liked that. They saw it was effective. So they participated more. This is another um, department. This is uh, a program that we call ROOTS, which is equivalent to an introductory world civilizations history course that every student at the university takes, usually as a freshman. Uh, again, we saw a jump from 54% to 85%. And the reason I pulled this one out is that they're very similar numbers of sections. And it has similar numbers of uh, students enrolled. So you can see here in the blue, this is the, for blue, <laughs> the blue shaded grass is the response rate in blue in this um, gray is when we were in uh, skylight. One more is um, showing the chemistry course evaluations. We always thought chemistry was one of our better um, departments. But they, again, went from 69%, which they all thought was pretty good, up to 84%. And here's their response rate. In addition to that, we did a, some additional analysis by class size and largest sections. And blue allows us to really easily do this. So we can see that across the board, this is one of the things that faculty and administrators were interested in. Does it make any difference response rates by class size? And you can see here in these large classes and the small classes, they had fairly consistent response rates. So. Uh, that was a very interesting finding. And here it shows the 15 largest sections and what the response rates are like. Here's just some numbers of ones. This is not everybody, but ones that you can see. This is our old system, Skylight. These are our response rates. And this is the new system, Blue. This is the College of Engineering. So even ones that, you know, 55% I'm not as completely happy with, but it still was an increase over the old system, which was 
And this slide uh, shows response rates. This was from the, our pilot semester. Shows response rates during the evaluation period. So you can see this is when the evaluations were launched. And this is how many, you know, here we're at a 20% response rate. We send the first reminder. We get a little jump right away. You know, it sort of flattens out a little bit. Here's another one, and it goes out, and then, you know, all the way up here to the um, end of it. So this was a response rate in the pilot. In the pilot, the College of Nursing, they only had four or five courses. So it's not reflective of the whole thing. But it gives you an idea of how you can monitor the effects of reminders and automation of those reminders in blue. And sort of wrapping up on some of my uh, final impressions here with, a, with about uh, 20 minutes left to go in our session. Uh, we're constantly looking at refinements in our practice. What can we do each semester better to both improve delivery, improve faculty involvement, improve response rates, but also improve the use of the data. It doesn't do much good to collect a lot of data if the faculties and the chairs and the administrators don't have good access to reports of that data, can't use that data and bring it back and close that feedback loop, bring that back around and use that data again to improve practice. So that's why it's been really, really great for us, I think. And just the increased access, 24 by 7. They can do it on their mobile phones. They can do it on their tablet. The one thing I forgot to mention in the student session is we also experimented with, during the pilot, with going into a class where the instructor would say, OK, we're going to do the course evaluation in class next Monday. Bring your mobile phone. Bring your laptop computer. Bring your iPad or your tablet. And we're going to take the last 15 minutes of class on Monday and do the evaluation. That was very successful. And that also addressed one of the areas that we have um, heard from faculty where they said, I don't, I don't like that it's not like it's in paper, where I hand out the paper that day and everybody's there and they do it. So this mimics that practice. Instead of doing it on paper, they all bring their mobile devices. It was very successful. We did it in the Econ 101 class with 250 students. We had no technical problems. All the students successfully completed their evaluation. And the other thing we're trying to improve is consistent course evaluation policies from the provost. And uh, there, there's working on you know, making sure that people value and follow the policies surrounding our course evaluations. So that brings us to the um, question and answer. Uh, session. I think Jeff is helping me try to gather some questions. And this is my contact information and Jeff's contact information from Explorance. And we'll open it up the floor for questions. Sure. Uh, my contact today really is there are technical questions about Blue, but if there are questions about this presentation, we can handle them right here. Um, one thing that might be worth noting, if you don't want your question to show up in the chat box, you can right click and send that to me directly. So I'm showing up as Jeff Anderson 2 right now. And that way I will know who you are and I will uh, repeat your question anonymously from here. Uh, I see one's already come up here. Um, when the surveys are done in class, what do you do with those students who don't have a device to fill in at that moment? Yes, uh, well, that's a great question, Edward. Thank you. Uh, we found, I think, of that 250 class, there were about 10 students that, that didn't have a device that particular day, which is a fairly low number. So there, there's two ways that we handled that. Uh, one, we had some iPads where they could just log in and use those if they wanted to. Uh, or they could go back and uh, do the survey from the, the portal or from their email link. Uh, later on. So they didn't necessarily have to have a device if they forgot to bring their device that particular day. We did have some 
what you might call guest devices. Now that was in the pilot when we were experimenting. So in a normal class session, you wouldn't expect the professor to have five iPads that they brought along. So uh, the ones that we did in class that way, the students still had the option to do it outside of class and to go to the portal and find the link. All right. Um, I guess, Edward, if that fully answers your question, just let us know. Uh, there's one in from Georgetown College asking about how to give access through Blackboard. Um, I, I know Peggy already showed how she's doing this. That's using the Blue Portal integrator that actually puts the blocks directly. You also can put a direct link. Uh, for technical questions like that, I'm sure we can follow up later and help you out. Uh, Peggy, um, it says, how many courses are a load for an evaluation? I guess that that's um, how many are currently run, let's say, in, in a specific semester at a particular time. And uh, uh, um, I'm not sure the exact question there. I mean, we we ran uh, 50,000 evaluations in the fall. Uh, of those, the majority were in December at the end of semester, but we also have professional programs. We started evaluations in September. So we had evaluations running every month from the second week in September to through the Christmas period, which is our semester boundaries. Uh, you can do midterm evaluations uh, you know, as well with these. We had evaluations for um, some online business degrees where they have a six-week course. Uh, so it really varies when we run the evaluations. Right. 50,000 evaluations is about half of our university, roughly, in the new system. So we anticipate that to about double, where we're running 100,000 evaluations every semester. Uh, the next one is actually a question that I had as things are going along as well. You mentioned that um, you have a report of which students have completed and which haven't completed. Um, someone was asking about the loss of anonymity. Um, I guess is confidentiality an issue? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So the, the respondent completed report just gives the respondent names and uh, their student ID number for grading purposes. The main reason we do that is because Students, uh, excuse me, instructors use that to give extra credit to students. So the report just has a list of names and ID numbers. It's not ordered in any way. It's not ordered by the way that the evaluations come in. It, it has nothing about the evaluation. It doesn't show any answers. So it doesn't, uh, you know, compromise. Usually we don't release that right away when the evaluations are first running because we don't want the instructors to be able to go on the first day and see, oh, you know, Susie Smart has taken the evaluation the first day. Not that they ever see that in any kind of report. They, the instructors never see the individual student data. All they see is the aggregate reports of the whole class's data. So they would, but still we have a sensitivity that we don't want them to see you know, during most of the time when the evaluations are running, they can see their response rates, but then we release the respondent completed reports a little bit later on before grades are due. Okay. Um, and maybe I should throw in here that there are flexible confidentiality settings, so really you can set things up if you want to, so even the person running the projects wouldn't know who's invited and who's responded. But it sounds like your situation works pretty well. Yeah, and there is one college that says we don't want those reports at all, and they just don't. They just, we just don't put them up for that college, and they they have a policy that in that particular college, they don't allow their students to give extra credit reports. Okay, the way you have things set up for team talk courses, are the students filling in one form per instructor, or is it all the instructors in one form? Uh. For most of our team courses, it's uh, one form on the instructor. Blue is really flexible that way. You can set it up for, uh, you have the course questions and you have instructor questions typically on an evaluation. You might have other questions like 
questions about the student or questions about the learning environment. Uh, we can set it up so that if there are three teachers throughout the semester and say they each teach six weeks, at the end of the first six weeks, the students see just that instructor block of questions. They don't see all the course questions. They don't see any other kind of student effort questions or anything else the college wants to ask about. They just see the session and evaluation for that particular instructor. Six weeks later, they get another link and they, they take evaluation for the second instructor. Six weeks later, they get the evaluation block for the third instructor plus the course questions and any other kinds of questions. So, uh, you know, that's one way of what we call serial team teaching. But we also have colleges with team taught courses that do it where they just have all the instructor questions at the end. So the students get one link, they take the evaluation, each instructor block comes up for three instructors, and then they see the course questions and they take all of them at the end. So it depends on the college which way they do it. It's great because Blue will repeat that instructor block for multiple instructors automatically without you having to do anything special in the software. Okay, so just making sure I understood in that last scenario then it would be one link, you have one form, but all the instructors are on there? Yeah, so you know, they get instructor A questions, instructor the block for instructor B, the same question, and then the block for instructor C, the same questions, and then they get the course questions. So we do it both ways, depends on the college. It can even be different for each individual course within a college. You can have one course and one instructor that, you know, one course program director that wants their set of courses to be delivered, you know, just in time, right after the instructional block, or delivered at the end. It's very flexible. That actually gets into the next two questions. Uh, one was asking when the evaluations are run. And I, I think you just described that. They, they can be run at different times for different groups? Yes. OK. And the next question after that in this chat box is uh, about the data itself. Uh, can you disaggregate the data? So if a, if a class is team taught on the reporting side, how, what happens with the data? Yeah, you can do it both ways. Uh, so you can have each individual instructor get a report that shows just the report for their instructor questions. So in a team talk situation, one of the things that was really important in the uh, decision to adopt the blue was that we could have the instructor just see their questions and they don't see instructor B's questions or instructor C's questions on the report. And then they could see the course questions. Right, so the individual instructor could get a, a, if you want to call it, a private report of just their questions, or all the instructors could say, "Well, this is team taught. Uh, you know, the nature of this course is we all come and go. We're not serial team teaching. We just want the report for everybody. You could see it for everybody, or the administrator can see it. Say." Uh, for this nursing 308 course, I want to see every instructor evaluation in the report across all sessions, all instructors. I want to see the instructor, uh, you know, that would be the aggregate. That's the opposite. So you can pull out individual instructors. You can pull out individual sections, and or you can aggregate it. So. You have the flexibility. You don't have to set the evaluation up any differently to make that decision. That decision is made at reporting time, which is one of the nice things about the blue reporting, is I can, I can construct my reports either in disaggregated or aggregated, depending on my needs, and I don't have to decide that ahead of time. I can decide that at the reporting time after the data is collected. OK. Um. And I guess that that pretty much addresses Marcos's question about what access is given to instructors as far as the results themselves. Uh, do they see the feedback? Yeah. Well, our policy is that we do something called a, a quick report for instructors, and that's sort of just a, a term that was a legacy term from the old system. So each instructor sees a report, 
that have their instructor questions and the course questions. That's sort of the default that every instructor gets their report. There are some um, colleges that impose threshold limits, which is another feature of blue. So for example, if I didn't have at least three students responding in my section, I don't get a report. Blue automatically will exclude that from, from the reports. Most, most of our colleges, we don't have that situation. But in the College of Nursing, we often have it because they run courses across different campuses. And sometimes they have very small numbers, like three to five students in a section in the Tri-Cities campus. And they don't want um, student anonymity or confidentiality to be compromised by an, an instructor seeing comments and being able to you know, know which student said what. So we also have something called a low threshold feature. Uh, and we can produce reports for those courses without comments. What's great about Blue is you've got one data collection and one instrument. When it comes to your reporting time, you can say, oh, well, for this set of courses, I'm only going to give them the, the uh, fixed response questions. And I'm, not, I'm going to exclude all the comment questions and produce a report like that. But for the same set of courses, you can give a report that includes all the comments to the department chair. It's a very flexible system. OK. Um, someone was asking how you identified the large courses and small courses in your presentation. So you had a, a report that you showed. Maybe we can even scroll back. Yes, up. yeah. Anything above 160 students was a, was a large course. Uh, things that were less than 10, we had one category that was less than 10. Uh, so on the, the one particular slide that I showed, I think we did, the, the top end was greater than 160. And uh, the low end was less than 10. And then we had 10 to 20, uh, 21 to 40, 41 to 80, and then 81 to 160. So those were the breakdowns that we used for the class size comparisons. Um, the next couple of questions are pretty high level, so I'm just going to I'll come back to them in a moment. But while we're on reports, uh, when do you make the reports available to the instructors? Uh, yeah, that varies. Uh, but most of them, uh, you know, just that base instructor report, we release it uh, the day after grades are submitted. So they don't have access to the evaluation results until after grades are turned in. OK, so that's automated for that particular instructor? They only get access when they submit their grades? Well, it's usually done at the college level. There's a few colleges that, that do release reports a little bit earlier, but most of them do not want that. They want, you know, they, those reports are usually not released to the individual faculty member, but they might be re released to um, a college administrator. So it's the, you set up the reports so that they can be automated. If you have the reports finished ahead of time, right? you define what's going to be in this instructor report. You set the date for it to go. This year, our grades are due on May 12th. You know, May 13th. Uh, all the reports are automatically released to instructors. They can go into the portal. They can click the link. They can see their report for the semester. Some of the other reports, like the deans and chairs and administrator reports, we, re we release those a little bit later. And we also sometimes, uh, you know, we'll, we'll still be working on reports a month or two after the semester is closed for specialized reports where they want to look at something. Specific, like for example, in our engineering college, we wanted to look at gender on questions in specific courses. That kind of a specialized report, would we would take the request and then set up the report and do those a month or so after the data collection is over. 
Okay, so that's something you do centrally. You don't give instructors access to go and create their own reports or anything. This is instructors do not have access to do their own reports. They can they can request. They have access to their data. They have access to those the, the questions that they added. Those question through question personalization, they have access to that data, but they don't do their own reports. Okay. Um, just while we're on reports, um, did you import the class size data that you showed into Blue? Uh, Blue has that data. I wouldn't say okay. we imported it into Blue. I mean, yes, in a sense, we imported it into Blue. And Blue knows how many students were invited to take an evaluation, so that would be the class size. And then it knows how many students responded to the evaluation. Yeah. Right for every single course that's in the particular set of evaluations. Okay, so now I guess we can go back and get into the the deeper questions that were coming up. Um, one was, what do you think are the main aspects that favored the increase in the response rates? Greater faculty involvement and ease of uh, access for the students to take the evaluation through the portal and through the uh, mobile devices. Okay, and for that faculty engagement, is there anything that you did specifically to get faculty more on board? Uh, sure, yeah, we ran uh, sort of informational sessions about question personalization. We've done, you know, tons of communication out to faculty and department chairs. We went to some uh, all college faculty meetings. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the fall, we had sort of a general promotional session. Here's Blue, our new uh, student evaluation system. Uh, so. Uh, it was really uh, effective to be able to run these sort of training sessions to show faculty how to do the QP process, uh, you know, mid-semester to prepare for them putting their own questions on it uh, during the semester. So uh, there has been communication as well as uh, the the access. You know, the automated the automated email emailing is a really nice feature of Blue as well. So that if I had to say my second choice, that would be the second choice for students who automated email. For faculty, the ability to see their reports and the response rates while the response rate reports while the evaluations are running. That would be the second choice after QP. Um, there is a question uh, on whether or not you have data that shows the response rate differences between those colleges that did give extra credit or I guess different incentives and those that didn't. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we we don't have that data right now. We have not done that analysis. But uh, let me see on the slide if I can identify one. One of the colleges that didn't give uh, extra credit in Skylight, their response rate was 62%, and in Blue, their response rate is 81%. So they had a response rate of 81% with no extra credit. But I haven't specifically sat down and done that analysis. But that's a great suggestion. I'm going to put that in the queue to do right now. All right. Um, and I guess uh, this is sort of on topic. How were the results used specifically to, in teach, uh, to improve the performance of instructors in the future? Is that something that you take care of centrally, or is that something you delegate out and you give them access? You, know, you, you now know where these areas are. You can improve on them. Uh, well, the office that I work for is called the Office of Assessment of Teaching and Learning, and we have a number of assessment specialists that work with uh, deans and assessment coordinators in each college to do those evaluations. So our office centrally can suggest some kinds of evaluations to do, but 
mainly that's up to the colleges to decide what they want to do. We help them accomplish what they set uh, as their goals and what they want to do. All right. Um, there is a question about your previous system. Uh, what types of responses did it allow? Uh, was it paper, online? Uh, it was just online. Uh, for paper, we used an old Scantron system for the paper part. So it was a mix. It's always been a mix of paper and online. Blue, the provost has mandated everyone will go into blue. There will be no more paper evaluations. That's where we're headed. All right. Um, yeah, we're being asked to close things up, but our contact information is on the screen. So if there are additional questions, just keep them coming. Um, Peggy, thank you. This was great. Yeah, no we'll be happy to respond. Great. Thank you all for joining. Uh, please let Jeff or Peggy know if you have any further questions, and have a great day. Yeah, thanks to Blackboard for uh, sponsoring this webinar today. We appreciate it.